Good morning, my soccer universe. Yes, Europa League was happening. And the weirdest thing for Europa League is that there's no bar, which I think could have been very interesting yesterday um, to see a few decisions. Anyway, I want to run through the games. Um, today I'm wearing actually Sampdoria. I was thinking about Chelsea, but then in the end I just didn't feel like it. Uh, so I'm wearing my beautiful Sampdoria shirt uh, that I got late last year. So, yeah. uh, the game that I was personally looking forward to the most, uh, not only to watch, but in general, I think it's might be the most interesting matchup between Eintracht and Inter. I think it didn't live quite up to the billing, uh, at least I was putting on it. Uh, in the first half you could see that Eintracht is a little bit too um, nervy, for lack of a better word, um, and Inter actually had more of the game. They got a penalty, um, which I can understand the protests by Frankfurt, but on the other side, you know, there's contact there. It is a penalty, and I'm saying this as someone who uh, really doesn't like Inter. Uh, but Brozovic made it, uh, yeah, took, took the shot and maybe too far off the post and Trapp could save it. Uh, yeah, Trapp actually in the high made a, a little bit of an error later on and uh, just a few minutes later, but you know, Inter didn't do anything with it. Second half, um, Frankfurt tried at least early, early on to get something um, to finally show their offensive prowess, um, but almost to no avail. However, they should have gotten a penalty. Um, that, yeah, to be honest, if the, the first one was a penalty, and I think it was, then this one was also was probably even more so a penalty. So yeah, um, in that sense, Frankfurt uh, was not very lucky, and in the anger, uh, Frankfurt coach Hütter hit the hit a bottle and was sent to the stands. Yeah, uh, I don't think he meant to harm anyone, but I understand. Yeah, okay, he's up there. So it ended nil nil, the only nil nil this evening, and that was actually the game. Nah, I'm not sure. I thought that Frankfurt will probably score, um, but you know, with Inter, you never know. Uh, Zagreb Benfica didn't see much, but there was a penalty for Dinamo Zagreb, and Benfica seemingly had a very shaky performance. So in the 38th, Petkovic with a penalty gets the 1 0, uh, which puts the advantage, of course, to Dinamo. Uh, however, I still would think that Benfica will end up going through uh, on this one. Uh, however, you know. Another showing like that, and they had the big game in Porto uh, at the weekend, so maybe that had an um, impact. One of the surprises in the evening happened uh, between Sevilla and Slavia. Um, Sevilla took right off the bat the lead. I mean, uh, again, bad back pass was caught, uh, and uh, Ben Yedda makes it 1 0 first minute. Uh, Sevilla, of course, was the better, but you know, Stoch um, tried a few things. He had a, he took aim with his uh, right foot early, uh, um, earlier, and then he shoots it, he gets deflected, and it goes into the net in the 25th, the 1 1 Slavia. And may I say that uh, the Slavia jerseys, where you can see all the Puma fabrics, look strange. I mean, I like the black with the red star in I think that looked cool, but it also looked very much uh, futuristic in a way, very weird. Uh, they would fit in a Star Wars movie better than on a soccer pitch. And also, this was one of those mad matchups. I think there were two yesterday. Uh, white shirts and pants and black socks, and then the other team is the other way around. I mean, uh, there were three matchups that were had similar uh, theme to them. So Stoch makes it 1-1, but right off the bat, Munir, uh, three minutes later, uh, makes it 2-1 uh, for Sevilla, and Sevilla is actually, actually, actually pressing to get a result, but then an absolute freak goal. Uh, it's, it's super funny, I think it's a, a corner kick that gets deflected and hits the shoulder of Kral. Uh, 
who doesn't even know? I mean, he's more or less, uh, he looks away from the goal and the ball goes in and the sun here is, oh, it's 2-2. Two -two. Crazy, absolute nuts goal. Uh, and Sevilla cannot make anything. I mean, they had a chance uh, by Munir who actually converted. But it was ruled offside. It was not Munir, I think it was offside. It was really uh, a, a, a decision by a hair. Uh, but yeah, it was not Munir who was offside and so the goal did not stand and then uh, yeah, Sevilla was pressing but couldn't, couldn't get it done. It ended 2-2. A great result for Slavia Prague. Um, don't get, get me wrong, um, I'm nothing against Sevilla, but I would like Slavia to move on again. Zenit via Real is probably a game that I... I mean, I saw highlights this morning, I, 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 I didn't follow it that much. Zenit uh, to Asmun from Iran uh, had a huge chance right in the first half uh, where he had a, uh, was running alone on goal, rounded in the goalkeeper, couldn't pull, pull it in. Then he makes uh, takes off the offside when Villarreal makes the 1-0 uh, and you know, I, ha I haven't even re um, down the scorers here so I'm sorry about that uh, makes the one nil but a few minutes later Asmoon gets the equalizer which at first was contentious but I remember from Euro 2008 if a defender falls outside and there's still the goal goalkeeper he counts for offside so in that sense uh, the goal counted it's a, it's one of those weird rules but I think it makes sense because otherwise a defender could easily stop outside of the behind the goal line uh, to pull the um, attacker offside. I think that's not in the spirit of the game. While it might look weird, I think uh, it's the rule is correct that way. The second half, uh, Zenit crumbled and uh, Villarreal put in two goals. 3-1 Villarreal. Now to the other big surprise, uh, Ren Arsenal. Iwobi gets a very early goal uh, in Ren. Uh, I'm sure it was a cross meant for um, Obama Young, but no, it went into the net and 1-0 uh, for Arsenal, but that was the only thing that really went well for Arsenal. Everything else uh, did not go Ars Arsenal's way and it especially happened when Socrates got two yellow cards uh, within a few minutes and was sent off and from the free kick, um, Bur uh, Burigo. Uh, first hits the wall and it comes back to him and he smashes it into net. Really super pretty goal uh, to make it 1 1. And then Ren, who I think is one of the more exciting sides to watch in France. Uh, I have on them a little bit the Fiorentina tag. Um, maybe not so solid in defense, but going forward they have quite some good players. Not only Burigo, they have Saar, they have Ben Arfa, they have Nyang. It's a really uh, impressive squad. I mean, they will not challenge for, for the title, but the goal goal good, good enough to uh, going forward. And yeah, forward they, they really put Arsenal, who played in their awful mint jerseys. Um, put them quite under pressure and it was an own goal by Monreal uh, who made it with his hip. Uh, by the way, Jack who played two years for Ren, Stade Ren, uh, was actually in goal. And then, and I think uh, Dina Emery has to take that criticism, he actually tried to get the goal and left the defense, it was very shaky, a little bit exposed and so a uh, counter attack. Uh, with a wonderful flying header by Saar, made it 3-1 for Ren. Great result for them. Another team that I really would like to go see to, uh, go through to the quarters. Then those were the early games, and I didn't quite understand why we have five early and only three late games. Well, the three late games, uh, Chelsea Kiev was more or less a one-sided affair. Kiev only uh, late in the first half and for the first time a little bit possession. I gotta say. Beautiful jersey by Kiev, and then with the UEFA slogan, no to racism, I wanna know uh, which uh, sponsor they have that cannot be displayed. I have to check that, that one, but it uh, looked really, 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 really cool, gotta say. Um, and that was a matchup, you know, 
uh, Chelsea in the typical outfit, all blue with white socks, and that forces Ki uh, Kiev into all white with blue socks, which is weird. And even on the display, at Chelsea in all blue with Kiev, because they had a little bit blue on the um, shirt, I guess. They had the white blue. Uh, looked weird. Let's put it that way. Anyway, Pedro makes it out of the first chance of 1-0. It was wonderful through ball uh, with the heel by um, Giroud. Pedro could pull it in. Uh, Pedro should have made a sack as the second one just a few many minutes later. Uh, and Chelsea was having chances and similar to the last week and didn't take it. However, uh, William then with a nice free kick. And I don't know why the, why the goalkeeper was complaining that uh, his players are not jumping because they were jumping and William just struck it super well. Uh, made it 2 0 and in the end uh, it was even 3 0 by Hudson Odoi. It was also nicely played. Goal. So yeah, but could have probably been more. Napoli Salz, Salzburg. That seemed to me the most interesting one, uh, just because Salzburg is so uh, nasty to play against, and they actually started out very positive. But Napoli showed that they are clinically and an absolutely uh, well-adjusted team. Salzburg had the best of the first five minutes, and everybody in here saying that, and then Milik. Uh, nah, nah, Napoli takes their part. I mean, they force all the errors um, and use all the, how to say, use all the errors that Salzburg is making, even in positioning, and to put the clinical through balls to Milli gets the goal in the 11. Uh, in this, when did he get it? Da, 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 da. Very early. I think 10. 11th minute, some something like that around the goal, goal goalkeeper puts it in. Uh, a little bit later, Fabian Ruiz makes it 2 0, and it was one of those weird, weird, weird games. Salzburg, um, you know, it's not in their nature to uh, defend, so they actually tried to keep playing, and it's a knife's edge. On the one side, you have chances to make a goal, on the other side, you leave yourself open and yeah that's what happened i mean in the second half started similarly salzburg trying to press get the away goal however they are so vulnerable for attack and angelotti did a masterful job in adjusting for salzburg i think salzburg rarely ever has played an opponent that knew how to counter their style of play in addition to uh, certain players being rather uh, nervous at the occasion of playing I mean, this is for sure the biggest opponent that Salzburg has played in a long time. So this team never has played a, a team of the caliber of Napoli. And yeah, uh, they got the third goal through an own goal, which you cannot really blame the defender. He wanted to, you know, push it over the goal. It goes in very nicely done, but there was Milik right there. And then Mertens probably should, should have made it four on the other side. Late in, 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 in the game, Goldmanson could have made it 3-1. Uh, so yeah, I think Salzburg could have got the goal, but Napoli could, 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 could have gotten just a few more. So in that sense, I would say the result is overall justified. And yeah, I actually want Napoli to win this competition. Uh, last game, Valencia Krasnodar. 30 minutes Krasnodar, and that was the other one. White, uh, you know, all white with black socks against all black with white socks. I just don't get it. It looks weird. Uh, Krasnodar did not get anything going in the first 30 minutes and Valencia through Moreno took very quickly a two goal lead. Should have even made it 3-0. Uh, there was a 100% chance um, where if the, if the shooter, I remember now, no, I, I want to say Soldado but I don't think it was Soldado because he's not playing anymore. Um, if he puts his foot just a few millimeters to the right, the, the ball goes in. Um, but then Krasnodar got back in the game and actually uh, put Valencia on the back foot and got a second half to 2-1 and that's probably the deserved result. I mean Valencia then tried to press uh, in the end, the very end to make a third goal because they know this is not a good result for them. 
because Krasnodar showed that they are a really good team. And yeah, with a little bit of luck, uh, Krasnodar can actually move on with that one. So that was the Europa League. Um, interesting to say the least. Uh, two surprises with Slavia and Ren for sure. Uh, Krasnodar, I think, is also still in the game. For me, Villarreal uh, at Zenit is also surprising. Personally. Quick thing on the Champions League. Uh, the fallout of Di Francesco from Roma was sacked. I mean, he was dead man walking. As I said, I really do not like second coach during the season. I actually think it should be. It should not be allowed. Let a coach work out. Uh, it has been shown that coaching changes very rarely uh, get an effect or get the desired result. Uh, a coach should see out the season, then you can make a change. Uh, but yeah, I actually thought that the, 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 the Francesco didn't do a, such a bad job at Roma. Uh, especially he had a young squad that I always feel you, this was a team that you need to give time. I think this season was not a season uh, where you push forward because you just were in the semi-finals. This was a season of a little bit transition and for that reason I don't quite agree with that. And of course still PSG is fuming about the penalty, which was a clear penalty. I also think that the Roma penalty that was not given was a clear penalty. But well, that's what it was. Let me know your thoughts about all these games, especially our Europa League, but if you want to for Champions League as well in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.